Hi, welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to cover Java basics for Selenium. Before that, we have a day one session in which we have covered uh, like uh, what is Eclipse, then how to create classes, object, how to call methods and constructors. Here in this session, we are going to cover like different type of methods and apart from it, we are going to cover condition handling by using if and else. So here we are going to cover different kind of methods like method without argument and without return type, method with argument but no return type, method with the argument and the return type. So moving to Eclipse, here I'm going to create a new project. So I've created a Java project given the name like uh, Java Basics. Now a project is created in the package explorer. Here I'm moving to the SRC. Right click on that and then package. So given the name of the package is testing. Moving to the right click on this package class and I have given the name of the classes A. So now a project is created, package and then classes created. So all the code that we want to write in Java must be inside the body of the class. So I'm coming to the body of the class and creating the first method. It's a public void sum. Here I'm not giving any argument to the method. If you are here, I have defined the two variables int a and int b. Int c is equal to a plus b. System dot out dot print ln c. So what I'm doing? I have the two variables a and b with some initial value. Uh, I'm performing some addition between them, and then result is displayed. So this is the method which is not taking any argument and which is not returning any value. I want to call this method, I'm going to under class B. Here I'm defining a main method. So it's a main and I have created the object of the class A. So A obj is equal to new A and then obj dot sum. So this is the sum method. Whenever we are calling this sum method, it will result 30 because inside the method we have defined two variables which will always be same so if i execute it the next time it again shows 30 means this is the method which is not taking any input from us it is just using the initial values which is defined inside the method and execute the code moving to the another method that i want to create like public void sub so i want to perform the subtraction so I mentioned two inputs or let's say two arguments int a int b and here I'm defining a local variable c. c is equal to a plus b. So now we are passing some inputs, we are passing some arguments and these arguments will be used for calculation. So I'm you know printing the output at system.out.println going back to the my main method and executing this time i'm not executing the sum method obj dot sub so here we can check it shows like if you want to call the sub method you need to provide the two inputs i just select this so it's asking for the first input i have given 30 and the next input i have given 20 and now my sub method will perform operations on the input which i have provided so if I execute this, the result is 50. Sorry, the calculation that I have mentioned is not correct. So I mention is A minus B. I'm moving over here and this, so result is 10. So as of now, we have covered two methods, sub and sum. Sum is not taking any input, just you know utilizing its initial values. But in the case of the sub method, we are providing some input. Calculation is performed on the behalf of these inputs and we are getting result. So I'm coming over here, 
public void multiplication. I'm giving two inputs like int a and int b. Here I'm defining a local variable int c which is equal to the a into b and then return c. So here we can check like I'm returning some value. What does it mean? The thing is that here I'm taking some input, performing some action and I don't want to display the result. I just want to return the result. So if I'm returning a value, so I have to check what is the return type? What is the data type of this value? So data type of the C is int. So we'll copy this and on the place of the void, we will mention int means this time we are returning some value and the data type of the value is int. So whenever we are returning any value, we must mention the data type of that value. I'm going to uh, B class again and here I'm executing obj dot multiplication. So here we can check like it is asking for two inputs and here we can check it it's going to provide us integer as a result. So I just selected this and provided two inputs, given two inputs, 10 and 20, a result will be generated. So we are going to get the result in the integer format. So we have to save this result in any of the variable. So I have created a variable in the Z and the result which is coming from there, I stored into the Z. We can utilize this Z by any mean, like I can print this Z, O first I'm printing it so result is printed what I can do more like I'm calling this subtraction method and in subtraction I'm passing two values one is 100 and other is result of Z the result of Z will be 200 I'm returning I'm performing 100 minus 200 so result should be minus 100 so here we have seen the result is minus 100. So what we have covered, we have created three functions, functions without argument and return type with argument and the return type is the second method. So second method is with argument but no return type and third method with that we have created as a argument and return type so we have the three methods with the argument without arguments and in some cases we are using the return type as well so now we have covered the method section i'm moving to the next section it's a condition handling so for condition handling, I'm creating a live example. I'm creating an example in which we will check value is even or odd. So what I'm going to do, I'm creating, I'm creating a method public void check even odd. I'm taking an input A. I'll check this value is a even or odd. What is the even number? Even number are the numbers which is perfectly divisible by 2. So I'm checking if the number which is coming, I'm performing a mode action and checking the result of the mode. If it's 0, means this number is even. So I display even number. Else I mention if that is not an even number, this is this is odd number so I'm going here in the main method and calling this check even odd and passing 31 so in this case it should display it's an odd number but I try to find out another case like 22 so here it should display it's a even number so my function is working perfectly we have checked the condition that it's a even or odd by using the if else condition whenever we are calling uh, this method it first check this if condition if it's satisfied then this code will execute else 
else this code will execute so we have the condition like if it's mod by 2 then it show e1 else odd moving to the next section i'm improving this code to improve this code what i'm doing uh, you know uh, i have a different question like first the number which i'm getting i'll check if it's a negative number or not if not if if it's a negative number that i'll display it's a negative number if not then i'll check it's a zero or not if it's a zero then i'll display it's a zero number and if it's not negative not zero then i'll perform even and odd so i'm going here and i check if this number which is coming from you know from uh, from the user or i'll say the number which is coming as an argument i'm checking if it's less than zero then system dot out dot print ln this is zero sorry it's less than zero so this is negative i'll mention this is negative here i want to check one more condition so i'm checking else if if this number is double equal to zero so you know uh, some cases we are using equal to and double equal to so whenever we want to assign some value like if i'm doing this means we are assigning a value dimension p because a we have already created a local variable over here so if we are assigning a value we are going to use single equal to but if we are going to compare the value it will be double equal to so here we are comparing the value so i use double equal to so if it's not negative i'm checking if it's zero so i mention this is zero if it's not negative non-zero then i'm moving to the next condition and a mod by two if the result is zero after the mode if the result is zero that means it's a even number and if it's not a negative number it's not a zero it's not even even number then i'm moving to else and the else i mentioned this is odd number so i'm going to execute my program and here we will see it's a even i check another condition here 23 it should display odd then i'm going for the zero condition i mentioned I, I have given the 0, this is 0 and then I give minus 5 or 6, so here this is negative. So we have tested all the conditions and all the conditions are working fine. So here in this session we have covered methods, different kind of methods, then condition handling, so we have used if else, if else if so we can use else if as many number of times as we want and at the end else so while using the if else if and else it is not mandatory to use if and else if means if we are using if it is not mandatory to use else or else if so if we have the more than one conditions we can check by using else if one more thing I want to, uh, you know, update over here. If you want to check more than one condition, like if the number is less than zero, and for the and we are using double and, if the number is greater than minus hundred, then we want to perform this condition. So for and condition means this and this both must be true. So in that case, I'm going to use and. If we if we want to perform the or operation means either of the two must be true then i can mention this or operation here it's not going to be used i'm just you know showing that we can perform the or operation by using this double pipe symbol so here we have covered condition handling thanks for watching this video if you want to know more about us you can come www.thetestingworld.com thanks for watching this video